and welcome to the first episode of the Quackcast. This is going to be Smogon's uh, monthly VGC podcast. I'm your host, Rishan, uh, Firestorm on the boards. And with me, I have Evan. Howdy. Uh, Scott, a.k.a. Sinra. Hello. And Hui. Hello, please. Wow, you were just racist against your own race. That's... I'm glad we got all of our gimmicks in there. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I couldn't say A or anything, but I could have done that. In any case, right now, um, most VGC players seem to be wrapped up playing in the International Challenge, which is uh, Nintendo's worldwide um, Wi-Fi ladder tournament. With about, they said they had fifty thousand spots open. I don't think they filled. And uh, it's one of our first chances to really get to play against the Japanese in the fifth generation. So most of us have been playing that and Mass Effect 3. Evan's been playing neither. Ooh, ouch. Fortunately, none of us are playing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can actually hear the sound out of one of you. Yeah, that, that was the goal. I moved, I moved my DS up there. That's prop comedy right there. Oh, uh, thumbs up oh, on thanks, that Thanks, Carrot Top. Prop comedy doesn't <laughs> work on radio, yo. <laughs> Ooh, what are you playing right now? Like, are you still playing against Cakes of Span? I'm battling Cakes of Span as we speak. I- I'm just going to fight for America, swear. unless except think you think he's American also, but I'm, that's okay. He won oh, a, he, he got this. second place at the Virginia Regional, so I assume he's American. Hey, I got a Japanese person named Katya. You can read Japanese. It's uh, in the um, it's in English letters. But oh. you, can tell, you can tell it's Japanese because the letters are bigger. Oh. Shit, really? Yeah. <laughs> I definitely oh. noticed that before, we. Of course. The it... Japanese used much larger English script. <laughs> See, if we had TTS yeah. on, he would be able to tell us that for sure. But, um, like, but then we'd have to talk to TTS. <laughs> oh, that'd be a shame. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Like Love you, Danny. I think something we've all kind of noticed playing so far, like, uh, it started basically yesterday. So I think one thing we've noticed is the Japanese play quite a bit differently from us in that their teams are actually interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think, I don't know, like, uh, I was actually playing PO a lot lately. I don't know about Kui or Scott or Evan. Like, have you guys mm-hmm. been playing? Uh, sort of, kind of. I mean, I get on like once every couple of weeks, I guess, just to try stuff and when I'm bored. Yeah, so basically, um, we've been seeing Hitmontop, Zapdos, uh, Garchomp, Latios, Cresselia, etc. about every battle for a month or so. Now I'm finding out that people can use Pokemon like, say, Gyarados or... Well, okay, Stunfisk, but I've seen lots of people use that in Nationals. <laughs> <laughs> I did play a Stunfisk today, though. It was pretty cool. Um, I'm seeing a lot of Salamence is one of the big things. Yeah, Salamence and Dragonite. The other dragons? Yeah, the one's not called Garchomp. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've actually been surprised, too, because the Pokemon I'm seeing in this event are a little bit different from what I was seeing in Wi-Fi before. Like, it seems like um, I try and practice in Wi-Fi when I can begin with, just because I think... Uh, Kind of like there's like muscle memory to actually remembering you can't cancel moves and that sort of thing. Yes. And like, like a, I was seeing a lot of Suicune before and like the typical like bulky recovery Pokemon sort of thing. And like the Japanese in this event are still using the same general strategy, but it's a little bit different now. Like you said, there's more of the dragons. Like I fought a couple of choice band Dragonites and that sort of thing. Like a little more trick room, but uh, bulky shit for sure. The thing with Dragonite is I'm really afraid that it doesn't have. Um... What's that thing? Multi scale? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm afraid of faking it out. Like, I just don't do it. <laughs> I usually go for the other mod. Yeah, fake out's an interesting thing to bring up, too, because I know uh, when I was talking to Skarm about how the Japanese play, uh, one of the things he reminded me is that uh, a lot of the Japanese players have a tendency not to carry um, fake out on some of the things you might expect them to have fake out on. And oh. even if they have it, they might not be using it every time. So, uh, I don't know. I think that's an interesting line of thought yeah like, and i've noticed that playing myself too where like i'll be predicting fake outs and they'll be a little more creative with that yeah i mean online in general um and this goes back to just regionals you can't always just assume that 
your opponents playing the same online metagame that we've sort of grown up with. You know, because we're we're used to everyone's carrying a fake out or everyone's carrying um, like some sort of trick room set or not trick room set, um, some sort of like random support Pokemon like Cresselia. But you know, you, there's a lot more space um, that I've found playing limited on uh, Wi-Fi myself. I'm not a part of the tournament for no good reason, but um, from my limited experience on Wi-Fi itself. Yeah, this, yeah, because when I use fake out, it's like, well, it's first turn. Sometimes I can kill something, but I'm still too afraid, and still mm -hmm. use fake out. <laughs> I think that's part of just not knowing all the damage calcula like calculations, especially when you see Pokemon that you just don't see, like uh, ice. Like you said, Salamence is really popular, but I think really it goes towards if it's a strong looking Pokemon in game, you're gonna see more of it on Wi-Fi, because that's what people are gonna have on hand and think, yeah, this is strong. Well, another thing I found about Wi-Fi is that there's such a huge variety. When I was playing on PO, I would actually get... I got to a point where I could actually script my battles beforehand and just, like, pick out a certain set of moves I was going to do turn by turn before, and I was still able to win just because everyone got so predictable. Yeah, I know like, what you everything mean. Everything was so similar. Like, basically, if I see those Pokemon I see on PO, I pretty much know how the game is going to play out, and I just execute my strategy without thinking. Whereas um, today I've played this really interesting, well, it was interesting so much that my team was super weak to what he led with, which was uh, Politoed and Ferrothorn, and I spent the game basically juggling Pokemon to try and kill Ferrothorn before it wiped out my team. And somehow I pulled out a win, and I had to think every turn, which I haven't done in a while. Then there's other games where I don't think and realize I should have, and like Scott said, there's no cancel button. Yeah, that's part of just playing on Wi-Fi in general. Um, it forces you to slow down. Um, just the whole pace of the of playing on Wi-Fi is so much slower. I feel like you're more invested in it, too, because on PO, you lose one. It's like, oh, in 30 seconds, I'm just going to have another win. If you're playing on Wi-Fi, you have, like, 20 minutes for the next battle to let that last loss stew in your head. Oh, God, yeah, you're right. And because of that, I'm so much less willing to use inaccurate moves on my Wi-Fi battle. <laughs> like, I'm actually seeing my move choice be different between PO and Wi-Fi. Which is kind of scary when you think about it, because PO is what people use to um, practice for regionals. And they're going to go to regionals, and there's going to be it? so much more at stake. <laughs> well, I think the majority do. Like, I know a lot of the better players are just like, no, PO is not their practice place, but... I think for a lot of people getting into VGC, it's like, yeah, that's where they try it out. Yeah, I think of nothing else. I think people would learn a bit more if they tried to use both mediums. Because I mean, there, there's some things that PO is just great for. Like if you have an idea and you want to try it out now, it's so much quicker just yeah. to try it in PO first. You know, and like you can, if something's obviously not going to work, you know, you'll figure it out pretty quickly there. But like, it's not. It, it's not very good training for the way you have to play in the event, and it's not very good practice as far as like uh, the types of Pokemon you're going to play, because I, I think people are misleading themselves if they think they're going to see the same group of 10 Pokemon every round they play in a regional, the way you do on Skarmblaze's server most of the time. Yeah, I mean, I've learned more about a bunch of Pokemon than I have in a month of POing in, like, 24 hours now. <laughs> it's also a lot more interesting than the last Wi-Fi tournament. Like, um, did all of us play in that, the Autumn Friendly? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. All evidence of my participation in that was actually uh, deleted, but <laughs> oh, disqualification. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> apparently you can be number one without that. So. <laughs> um. Yeah. My actually, I didn't play the last one that much because I had final projects I'll do around that time. But people were saying that the last one was a lot more autopilot than this one. Well, a lot of I that comes so. from. Yeah, that I think a lot of that comes from it being at the end of the season. Oh. Everyone had what they were doing. We played this metagame um, for a year now. The, the other was, thing is that... Our, go ahead. I was just going to say it was such a small metagame that you sort of got used to being able to... You, you could know every Pokemon. You could know what every Pokemon does and know exactly how to, how to deal with anything you see. Versus this one, which is a lot larger. The pool is so much bigger. And the other thing is um, the last one... Japan actually wasn't allowed to play with us. So oh. I oh, think that's right. uh, most of it, like a lot of the really cool stuff I see from Japanese teams, 
Oh, uh, yeah. Which is why it's awesome to start playing late at night instead of in the afternoon where it's all Americans and stuff. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I think. Uh, so I think um, as far as the Japanese being involved too, like even though that both you know North America and Europe are just kind of all one big meta game, and Japan are playing with the same Pokemon, like we play mostly with each other on PO and in our regionals, and Japan kind of does the same thing. And like the meta game here is not the same thing as the meta game there, so it's really interesting in an event like this where like their metagame and our metagame collide because, you know, they've got teams that are kind of built to beat their opponents and we've got teams that are built to beat ours. And, like, there's a lot of Pokemon that are common between everyone, you know, like the Zapdoses and uh, Cresselias and uh, Chandelures and that sort of thing are pretty popular with both regions. But, like, they tend to be a little bit more bulky and there's a little bit greater variety of Pokemon and we tend to be a little bit more offensive and aggressive. So that's what I really missed about last year because um, 2010... I remember um, the run-up to Nats and Worlds when everyone was finding all of the old Japanese, um, like regional, uh, national regionals or whatever they were, videos, um, and just thinking these were so, they were just so different from the strategies that we had been using in our uh, meta games, and we didn't have that chance in PDC and eleven. I think a lot of the newer players never really understood um, just how different because they were so cut off from our meta game um, that their play style could be. And I think this is a really important way for them to sort of start getting acclimated to that and to start realizing that there are other ways to play. Well, it's interesting. I think the the ones that do really well, like, like the Huis and Rays, always actually do do something cool. Hopefully more people kind of get up to their level so that we can see some more interesting matches. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really tough to go all the way using only standard shit. Like, even last year's metagame, which I think is probably the most boring, like, overdeveloped metagame that we've probably ever seen in the history of Pokemon, which made red, blue, yellow, overused, look like there were, you know, a variety of interesting options and that were viable. Um, like, even there, you know, Ray pulled out a Pokemon that must have been lower than 1% usage throughout the regionals and the nationals and, you know, won the tournament with it. Like, and, you know, and even the other Pokemon, like, his Hydreigon was using a somewhat unconventional moveset, like... I think it's really tough to go all the way playing like a lot of players do where they just try to be the best at using the standard Pokemon and like using a few of them on your team is usually a good idea. But like if you can't think of something to make it easier for you to have an outlet to outplay your opponent, I just, uh, I don't know. It's tough to just win reliably doing the same thing that everyone else is doing. Agreed. So like based on this, do you think this is going to change up the, uh, April regionals at all? Like, do you think people are going to be? Well, I would, I would say, I think it's pretty obvious. People should be better prepared for the April regionals than the November one. But uh, by far, yeah. Like, are you expecting to see some kind of this Japanese influence play in? I don't think so. A lot of the stuff that uh, we got in the past from the Japanese were actually based off of like real life events, and we don't really have too many videos of that anymore, just because they don't have any of those real life events. So it's a little bit harder to see like uh, what does well with their meta game, as because all we really have to go off of now are like battle videos. And find well, also you know people as they play these Japanese players should be able to pick up on a little bit. I assume people are learning, and that this is a learning experience for people. Am I expecting too much? I mean, I think that the, the general idea you have there is probably right. Like, I mean, I think that people will probably have more cohesive teams this time and play better this time than last time. I thought it was really a fun, little funny that the Autumn Friendly was after the season last time because I know a lot of people had commented that they thought they would have done a lot better in like the last chance qualifiers and that sort of thing if they'd had the practice of the Wi-Fi tournament to at mm -hmm. least you know get better in form, understand the metagame better. So I, I think it'll be interesting to put that to the test with this regional and see if people are really playing at a much higher level than they were in November or last season or if you know the practice didn't help them so much after all. Well, I think the April regionals are going to be um, the players are going to be across the board better than the November one just because you have more time with the metagame. You have more time to practice because the November one just sort of came and you were ready or you weren't, and most people weren't ready. I don't think I'm going out on a limb to say that I wasn't anywhere a little bit ready for the November regionals. I don't think a lot of people were. Um, hey, man. So, I went with a Butterfree. <laughs> oh yeah, yo! Don't laugh. Hey, there is no shame in Ash team. I really wanted to use that team, but it was way too hard to use. <laughs> yeah. It's a manly team. It required like, 
It required skill and knowledge that, like, I just would say very few have. <laughs> it it, t- it yeah, takes but... a certain amount of guts to go into a regional with Butterfree and expect to do well. <laughs> Not just Butterfree. But sadly, most of us don't have. Pikachu and no. Butterfree. <laughs> Both his leads pretty much die to anything. That's, that's true. Sometimes I would die like just hail forms. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what it felt like. <laughs> I was definitely rooting for you on that one, though. Definitely. Yeah, I did. I did. Hey, you did just as well as I did. <laughs> yeah, well, that's because you suck. <laughs> Ouch. Do you use your VGC 11 team? Oh, no. I used just a really terrible team. It was so bad. <laughs> it was, uh, what was it? It was Crafty, Heatran, Zapdos, uh, Obama Snow, Parasect, and something else. Is that six? That's five, right? That's five, yeah. Remember. Pokemon Maybe, Maybe that's why you oh, I used Alakazam. I used my, I used oh, yeah. my Disable Encore Alakazam. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, I was just so really fun. thankful that Evan was so unprepared because you know, no matter how bad my luck was and how unprepared I was, at least because of how badly Evan did, I got to continue being better at Evan at every event we've always uh, <laughs> we've ever both been at. So that was thank- that was good. I was thankful for that. And I didn't get to go to one, so yeah. So we'll just pretend you used Butterfree and lost because I think that's probably the best. Th- you know, that'd be a... That is what I was planning on doing. So, hey, yes. Butterfree and loses. <laughs> it would have been Butterfree, Dragonite, and I didn't care about the rest of my team. I just wanted to use Butterfree and Dragonite. We can make that work. Um, I probably could, you know. Maybe maybe I'll look at working on it. I'm pretty happy with just, my team right now, though. If Dragonite gets Whirlwind, you can just sleep powder with Butterfree and Whirlwind. Dragonite. I think it's Dragon Tail. <laughs> I think you should oh, use Choice Pen Dragonite it because it's terrifying. It, it hurts so much. Oh my god. And you can't kill it. You Unless kill they have inner focus. Then you're terrible. In which case you can't flinch it. Well, the thing with that is you could double target it. I mean, it's not going to protect with Choice Band. What about yeah. Choice Band uh, Dragonite with like a healing pulse of Lizzie? <laughs> I actually played someone today with Lumion or, you know, some kind of that fish thing. It's a big pink fish. Alomomolo. Oh, Alomomolo. Alomomolo. Yeah, whatever the hell. I definitely wrote I the Wishmaker it. analysis for that Pokemon so I could teach everyone <laughs> about healing in BGC 11. I remember that. I remember that team. That was a that was a really silly team. <laughs> Real men learned VGC 11 by spamming dragon moves with dragons yeah. and healing them with a giant pink fish. I think that was definitely the best way to learn the metagame. Yeah, it was not healing a dragon. I don't remember what it was healing, but it kept dying. All right, it was healing Starmie. <laughs> what? Yeah. What? What? No, you heal bulky Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. So that didn't last very long. I would like to ban this user from using a Loma Mola because they don't understand. Get off my gimmick. Stay away from the hate fish. <laughs> hate disc the strongest. <laughs> Slaying many foes with waterfall with like eight attack EVs. Don't you use mirror code on it? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. It destroyed the shit out of Thunderous. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Thunderous cool. is like, I'm going to electric gem you. And then you... Nah, <laughs> nah. I don't think it attacked once. I remember it using heal pulse and a lot of wide guards. I'm not sure if the player knew that it fails a lot if you use it in a row. But he kept trying <laughs> to wide guard. <laughs> well, what it should have been doing was mirror coding you and killing all your Pokemon. That's what I would suggest. But Yeah, my pretty much my entire team is special based. See, see, this is this is a chance for Loma Mola to show its greatness. Like, it let me down. Let me down, just like that guy with Raikou who DC'd on me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I face actually at least two Raikous now. I have two. I'm pretty excited. The Japanese are cooler than me and using my favorite Pokemon against me and then DCing on me when I destroy it. Jerks. Raikou's super well, They were cool. honorable, like, it. in Mexico. I'm surprised Raikou doesn't get more work and more use. It's a pretty cool mod. Good, re- good reign of user. I like him on rain teams, but there's just so many strong electric Pokemon in this metagame. Like, b- between Rotom having like 87 different forms or something and like being able to possess everything yeah. from a toaster to a washing machine, and like Zapdos and Thunderous is still good because people know with priority Thunder Wave, no matter how bad they are, they might still win the game. And yeah. like, even some other stuff that's not as popular, like Jolteons and uh, the Thunder or the Lightning Rod users are all plenty usable. So, like, I don't know. I think it just. Uh, Raikou's having a hard time finding his niche. Like, been like hilariously killing things that try to use minimize with Aura Sphere. I mean, I think Raikou's niche is that it can it 
Tyranitar when it tries to change weather on you really hard. Although I guess it's probably going to have Chuffle anyway. Yeah, does it get, hard. Does it get Weather Ball too? Yeah, it does. Yes. That's really cool. How is no? Why is no one using Raikou? Because it's everyone. Hate. Everyone's really close-minded, and they haven't like you stick with Zapdos because it's safe, yo. So I tried it. I, I did try it um, when I was first learning eleven or twelve, rather, and like it kind of works, but like the rest of my team needed to be bulkier to compensate for it. Because like mm. it's re if you use an offensive spread, it's it's really flimsy. It's not Zapdos, and like being weak to Earthquake is challenging. And like if I don't know, it, you've got to protect it a little bit. But the coverage is really good. It does a ton of damage, and like mm -hmm. it can do some neat things for rain teams too. Like if you max the special attack, it normally uh, kills. Uh, Tactocroak in one hit with Thunder. I think you need Life Orb for it, though. So, I mean, like, you do need stuff like that, and he can knock up a lot of stuff that counters whatever weather you happen to be using. Uh, he's definitely he useful. Like, yeah, he's just like, he requires a certain degree of finesse that most people don't want to give when there's easier options available. Challenge accepted. Spe <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Zapdos, are you guys really petrified that they're going to release Lightning Rod Zapdos sometime soon? No, it probably won't uh, have um, Heat Wave. Oh, uh, yeah. I think even without Heat Wave, it oh, would just yeah. break the, sh the crap out of the metagame. Because, I mean, even, yeah. like, there's plenty of teams where you could run, like, Thunderbolt Discharge, Hidden Power, or whatever, or, like, use, like, yeah. a support move over your um, second electric move or something and still be terrifying because, like, there's so many good Pokemon who are weak to electric it could protect. Like, Spec Skyardos, for instance. Who, yeah. Think who'd about that? it. Me. Yeah, who'd use that? Think about it. <laughs> have like 60 base special attack. Yeah, that's worthless. <laughs> it won't no work at all. That. How does that hurt anything? That it's just. Yeah. Come on, Scott. <laughs> Seriously, I'm sorry. let's. We try to be serious in this quack cast. Lightning rods up those. Oh, just try to be creative. <laughs> See, this is why people aren't creative, Louis. Shoot him, you shoot him down like that. I mean, come on. I, I shoot him down like that so I can take all of the ideas. <laughs> of course. But you're right now, he's making a Spec Sky Eridos team. He's going to claim the idea as his own. I think J Rake's making an analysis in the VGC forum. Spec Sky Eridos. Now that he's got mods. <laughs> Let's like, take a moment of silence for the VGC CNC forum. Yeah, that died uh, when I stopped caring. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Everything dies on Smogon once I stop caring. He just wants you to take away his badges. Yeah, but he won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I have vetoed that motion several times. All right, but um, so would you think like Lightning Rod Zapdos would what pretty much be a uh, stronger Danny's team from last year with the whole Zebstrika thing? Well, you could do that, or you could just use it, to, like I said, to defend other Pokemon because Light it, like it's such a strong ability, and if you make the mistake of giving a Zapdos plus special attack, like mm -hmm. with how high its base is, even a really bulky Zapdos will absolutely destroy you. Okay. I mean, like you think about some of the other good electric weak Pokemon, like Togekiss would appreciate it, like uh, Suicune, which is pretty big in Japan and is better than I think most people give it credit for. Like Rain teams in general would appreciate the support. Rain teams would love it, except for their own thunders, but whatever. Well, <laughs> it doesn't attract your own thunder, right? Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. Zapdos is... I, I've, I've made the mistake of thunderbolting with Rhyperior on the field like a ton of times. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> does that happen for, say, Storm Drain as well? Yeah. Yeah. Well then. Thank you. Hey, hey, Rusha, just so you know, in order to win a VGC battle, you must defeat your opponent's four Pokemon before your four Pokemon die. <laughs> that is also oh, good to know. Help. I'm here for you. All right, man. Thanks. I just wish Sap Zipper worked the same way. <laughs> yeah, this, that <laughs> I wish Sap Zipper was good. That'd be nice. If only. Poor Sap Zipper. I mean, I want to use the deer thing, damn it. <laughs> exactly. It's not like the Pokemon they gave Sap Zipper to really have much going for them. It's like Zipper serious. Like, you like, at least make it okay. Like, wow, you managed to make Tauros worse. Wow. I mean, like, if awesome. Sap Zipper worked, Pokemon has like gotten progressively worse since the first generation. Even if it was pretty much God, then has somehow got a worse version of something that should have been an evolution of it. Awesome, great work. I wonder. I wonder if in like are you or in you, if the Afro Bull and Taros, which one's better? I don't know. There is only one way to find out. Are you going on a Pokemon website? 
Like I'm going at smolgon.com to find the answer. Beautiful. <laughs> Did you know Amoongus is like NU? Did you know that I yeah. don't even know what uh, Afrobull's real name is? Because Buffalo. I don't. Buffalo. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I looked it up because no, really, I wanted to use name? it. What's his name? I don't believe you. <laughs> Buffalon. I the, answer, to... the answer is Buffalant is apparently stronger. He's a man. No He's way. How are you? Which apparently is a tier on Smogon.com. Rarely used. My man like Winsong. Okay. Who was never used, which was a tier before, so I believe it. It has Sap Sipper. I basically wanted to use it because no, I thought Sap Sipper was better. And then I found out it wasn't, and it was basically flash fire for grass types. Yeah, if Sap Sipper could would redirect uh, like Storm Drainer's Lightning Rod, no one would care about things like Amoongus or uh, Breloom or Sun Teams in Man, general. If it absorbed it, Spore, it could have gone a long way. To, I thought toward balancing last year's meta game. Like it could have been a major player to counter the best Pokemon in the meta game, probably in Amoongus, but it didn't. Thanks. Could've, try though. Thanks, try. Game Freak. Thanks, thanks for making us put up for Amoongus for a year, but had like no counters. That was great. I enjoyed that a lot. Choice band oh. icicle spear. <laughs> Works every time. Oh, yeah, sorry. The most powerful ice cream in the world. CB cream. Even stronger than Rocky Road. Wow. <laughs> they should that... have made shiny ice cream like brown. Yes. <laughs> really. I just Chocolate. thought the same thing. There's so many gimmicks you can make with that. Come on. I think I'm going to make nope. an ice cream and a Rotom fridge tea. I'm going to make a food tea. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can give well, the food king. Food king there. There. Okay, so, so we got a mushroom and Tropius uses the banana tree. <laughs> you can use the dog Pokemon. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Um, Tropius is another Pokemon Zekidor. I wanted to use. use. You could make a sun team, like a sun <laughs> with fridge. A Rotom. sun hail team. <laughs> <laughs> if only you could eat a bomb of snow. Bomb snow is a lot Coconut tree. Don't worry about it. Know what it is like. It's it looks mean, whatever it is. I don't think I'd want it it's to be my friend. Tree. You eat pine nuts. I eat them in like salads all the fucking time. Oh my god! Some pine... aren't hipsters eat meat instead, Evan. But um... <laughs> I didn't even know pine cones were edible. Pine nuts I'm... are. Nuts. What? <laughs> pine cones. Do I need to explain <laughs> salads to you like I had to explain BGC? Because I will do it. Salads have vegetables <laughs> that normal people eat. Sometimes there's meat in the salad. It's not a what? it's not a vegetable, it's a it's a nut. It's a legume. You were gonna say legume, it's not a legume. <laughs> he did say legume afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know who really likes eating legumes? Nido King. You mean Nida King? <laughs> oh you're right, I do mean who would have said it the other way? Who who would have said that? At least he's learning. <laughs> it's all about learning what you did wrong and improving on it. I'm proud of Evan. Thanks, that, that really means a lot star. to me, Rashawn. <laughs> the gold star of Duck Cast number one goes to Evan. <laughs> Put it in your refrigerator with pride. Remember, hands up means food. <laughs> hands down, dirty clothes. We that's help a, this road top is either of those things. <laughs> Quickly, how can I how can I figure out what it is? Uh, I've actually been using that now to figure out which road top is which <laughs> on team preview. It's like, oh, that one looks like the hands are up, and there's an Obama snow. If with me, it's just like, oh, an American's using that team. It's it's the washing machine. I, I'm not <laughs> further than that. What if they're Japanese? It could be anything. It could be. <laughs> it's probably the original Rotom. <laughs> <laughs> um, didn't someone say they fought one of those yesterday? Uh, <laughs> are, are, you, are you still allowed to do that? Is, is, can you like use a? I think you should be able to use a violet on that now, because. That poor thing. It was my buddy in DPP UU. I think it's still in UU. It should be allowed to take over one of your opponent's Pokemon and turn it into an electric type. Assuming control of its form. It gets one random move. Assuming. It's like a beefed up ditto. Alright, so I think we're done talking about the international challenge for now. Um, <laughs> we might have oh, more on oh, that Scott, next did, month. Scott, did you beat Cakes of Span? I destroyed Cakes of Span by, like, 60 hit points. Destroyed. Dominated. <laughs> Wasn't even close. 60 hit points. Not bad. Then I said GG on the forum, and then he didn't reply yeah, to that's me. That's so uh, I'm, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping that he, he listens to this and then feels like a jerk and returns my GG. <laughs> what if somebody deletes your post and then he never sees it? 
What if I delete your account? Then what? I'm sorry, sir. That's what I thought. <laughs> Why don't you go make some stickies, minion? <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, but I'm going to take to meet its own forts. <laughs> you can never be too sure with me, I guess. No. Don't worry, I got you. Oh, I got dear. you, bro. I'm going to end this on that awkward note, and we're going to come back in a bit. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to just finish up this episode now, and we'd like to introduce a tradition in the Quadcast, which is looking through what is probably the best comprehensive Pokemon site on the internet, Bulbapedia and giving you quotes from them that we totally found ourselves and did not get off a Tumblr blog. Graveler doesn't share much in common with anything but boulders. Its four arms may be based on Hindu gods such as Shiva or Vishnu. And I know a lot about my religion, which is why I did that. Okay, <laughs> should, so we, should, we, should we say a little something about why, why this... <laughs> sure, sh should I say why this is important quotes? to me? Important. This is important to me because I am a devout Hindu, and I go to the temple every Friday. Yes, Friday is our holy day, Christian people. Friday is our holy day. Is it really? Um, Are yeah. Me? And we're like not oh. supposed to eat meat on it, which, as my Christian friend said, was really stupid because on his holy day he eats a lot of meat. And I do too. Does Friday come Same before Saturday? Arabs. Yes, yes. Friday comes before Saturday, <laughs> and then Sunday comes afterwards. So which Pokemon can I catch on Friday that I can't catch on any other day of the week? Lapras. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> Pokemon Master right there. Wow. Damn. Wow. Someone just gave me that shit at Self Company. <laughs> 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 that's just uh, part of the Lapras inflation that's been going on. <laughs> In the Lapras fed. You don't know where that Lapras has been. It could have been bred under unsafe conditions. Those Man. Lapras are being extorted. It's actually an inbred Lapras. <laughs> That's why Lapras sucks in red and blue. Well, hey, Lapras was, is my, was my MVP. Lapras was great. Love Lapras. In you what? Know what my he was level 85 Venusaur because I played the game like a real five year old or whatever. That nine, whatever old I was. Hey, man, I had my Slash Ember Flamethrower Fire Spin Charizard. Yes, me too. And I did not <laughs> evolve him until after Lorelei. I mean, you said sucked. My moveset was Fire Bat Blast, Flamethrower, Fire Spin, and Ember? something really retarded, I think. Oh, was yeah. Fun. But my Venus are definitely new Razor Wind, which I think is best ever. <laughs> razor Leaf, you mean? <laughs> no, Razor no, Wind. I mean no, razor, razor Wind, wind. the okay. GM. <laughs> that was that a movie. Don't you exist. remember? It was so important. No. Nope. <laughs> that defined the red, blue, yellow meta game. Two turns for four, like 40 base damage. Yeah. It's like, what if Fly was horrific, even for Fly? And there it is. <laughs> I used to what teach if it Rage didn't make you immune around. for a turn and didn't do good damage and wasn't a good type? And didn't yeah, even but, have it has a, but it has a high critical hit ratio. <laughs> Yo, not why that meant a lot. <laughs> How else am I going to get an easy critical hit in red, blue, and yellow? <laughs> hmm. okay. Okay. So, is it time for my fact yet? I want to do my fact. Sure, Scott, you can go next. All righty. I found my quote on the important anime physics page. In the anime, many things explode. It's very important to me because every time I talk to Rushan, Evan, and Hui, I want to make many things explode. Okay, you talk to me and I'm like, oh, he's going to make a terrorist joke. I was like, oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he kept going. Damn it. <laughs> Take two. Rushan <laughs> was everything up that white people and Christians love. <laughs> I don't think I can have my name attached to this anymore. <laughs> um, this is going to hurt your chances at political office. I, <laughs> <laughs> I did, just for the record, I did not find that joke funny. And I denounced the person who said it. Whoever that may be. Yeah. That was Evan Latt who said that, by the way. Evan Latt. <laughs> Indiana or tennessee i'm not he's sure he's from nashville but really nashville, from indiana and he has some sort of serious trauma that any future employer should be aware of <laughs> evan you can go and try and counter that with your own quote well my quote's very important considering the dire economic straits our current our country currently faces uh, everyone's trying to cut corners and find some extra space in their budgets for um, the necessities so here are some tips for your pokemon career the fresh water and energy root are the two most cost-effective HP recovery items, each recovering one hit point per four Polka Dollars spent. 
However, the Max Potion can potentially be more cost effective if used under very certain circumstances. The ideal situation for a Max Potion is a Blissey with maximum EVs and IVs in hit points, with one hit point remaining, which would recover around one hit point per 3.5 Poké Dollars spent. I... <laughs> yeah. That's going to save me so much money. Thanks, Evan. I mean, yeah. yeah. As a brown <laughs> person, I'm very thankful for that information. <laughs> I'm just really glad that Evan's going to be able to buy many more vegan burritos because of that information. <laughs> oh, I had I had one for lunch today. It was really good. <laughs> <laughs> you were my favorite stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Huey, just oh. wash oh, away okay. the pain. <laughs> okay, so I found this pretty interesting. Lola is the only member of Brock's family to not have squinty eyes. This means that all of her children inherited squinty eyes from her husband. Now, as someone that comes from my bi biology field, um, this just doesn't make any sense. If Lola has the non-squinty eyes, at least one of the children should have had the... Um... Wait, no, that, make, that doesn't make sense. No, it's... Doesn't make... It could be a dominant gene. Oh, right. The squinty eyes are a dominant gene, and... The non-squinty eyes are just a recessive gene. It's also, so, uh, yeah. So they're all carriers for for non-squinty <laughs> eyes because they have. So if Brock, or, or, um, if Brock's we don't know that. children are gonna have kids, I think it would be a quarter. Uh, yeah, a quarter of them would have the big eyes, and seventy-five percent of them would have the big eyes. The yeah, that's eye. assuming that's assuming that uh, the Lola's husband is that Brock's father. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we don't know either. <laughs> well, that's assuming that Lola's husband carries both the uh, both dominant genes. Could have one dominant and one recessive gene. Maybe uh, it's one of those traits that skips a generation. That makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, neither did my bio, my uh, genetics course. I got an A in there though. Small talk like a champ. Of course. This should this should really be under the anime biology section. <laughs> Is that linked to you from the anime physics section? Because I definitely <laughs> still have that open. Uh, Actually, one of our members, Fierzy Crawdont, um, runs a Pokemon biology panel at an anime convention every year. What the hell? <laughs> who, who would watch that? Can we just do like a whole segment on Pokemon biology next time? Oh, oh, can, we get, can we get him on? Yeah, I'll ask Mark. <laughs> <laughs> He's a BGC player. It technically qualifies. You know, does it make sense? What we should do for that is we, we should have him talk about Pokemon biology, and then um, you should argue, Rushan, about how that's not how the world was created, and that the biology is wrong, and that that's not what the, your Hindu guys told you. Unfortunately, and, um, I don't know anything about how the world was created from the eyes of the Hindu gods. I thought it was. That's okay. No, does either, neither does anyone else. You can just make it up. Sweet. It's my it's my opinion that the creation of the world is a topic that is still open to debate, and I look forward to debating on it in the future. <laughs> yeah, but in Arceus's Pokedex entry, uh... Dude, this is exactly what we need. <laughs> Uh, okay, Arceus emerged from an egg and shaped all there is in the world. Oh, well then what did what, what were Palkia and Dialga doing? Sex. <laughs> Sexo. I, okay, I'm gonna actually research into this and we can do this next time. Can we do this? <laughs> oh god, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll just troll all the panelists while I'm doing it, which is like what I did during this panel, but different. <laughs> Alright, well, um, there you go, a preview of what we may have in store for you next month. And uh, I guess we just have one thing left to say, and that is, thanks, Bulbapedia. Thanks, Bulbapedia. <laughs> it was around the same time. All right, we're around. around. <laughs>